The American Broadcasting Company Radio Network presents Space Patrol! High adventure in the wild, vast reaches of space. Missions of daring in the name of interplanetary justice. Travel into the future with Buzz Corey, Commander-in-Chief of the Space Patrol! In today's transcribed Space Patrol adventure, Buzz and Happy are inside a small atmosphere shell on the planet Pluto. Outside the transparent dome, a gang of armed criminals approach in spacesuits. Stoken and savage in the gang. Hey, Commander, they've got to come through that airlock one by one. We can pick them off if they try to come in. Corey, this is Savage. You are trapped. Now be smart and give up. He's on our miniature space upon frequency. Yes. Savage, this is Corey. If you want us, come in and get us. Uh, don't be a fool. There are eight of us, and we got blasters. We can crack the atmosphere shell and bring that whole dome down on top of you. Smoking rockets, Commander. What are we going to do? We'll be back in just a moment with today's exciting space patrol adventure, The Hermit of Pluto. The United States has seen many changes in the past dozen years, all pointing to a still better way of living. Millions more Americans are working, earning more, saving more. We're eating more and eating better. More young people are going to high school and college. More of us are getting paid vacations. More of us are enjoying the luxuries of life. Sports, radio, television, the theater, concerts, church attendance, and membership has climbed steadily upward. In addition to these material and spiritual changes have come the miracles of jet propulsion, supersonic flight, antibiotics. All these changes have produced tremendous needs. We need factories, and machinery needs modernizing to increase our output of electric power. Our current needs add up to greater employment and investment opportunities for practically everyone in America. The better you know America, the better the future looks. Write for the free booklet, The Future of America, Box 1776, Grand Central Station, New York 17. Now today's Space Patrol adventure, The Hermit of Pluto. Commander Corey and Cadet Happy are on a special mission to Pluto, outermost planet of the solar system. Forty times as far from the sun as the planet Earth, Pluto is a dark and frozen world. The gases that would be its atmosphere lie in a solid coating like ice upon its surface. In Pluto's black sky, the remote sun appears as a large flaming star. The population of Pluto City is protected from the cold airlessness of space by a thin atmosphere shell. Beneath this huge transparent bubble, life goes on as it does on Earth or Terra or Mars. It is not quite the same as Buzz and Happy are observing as they walk down a dimly lighted street of the city. Gee, Commander, why don't the city commissioners do something about those lights? This is the biggest city on Pluto, and yet we can hardly see where we're going. In lots of ways, Happy, this is still a pioneer community. Yeah, and from the looks of the buildings in this neighborhood, maybe it's just as well that the streets aren't too well lighted. Well, Pluto is still a frontier planet, Happy. Huh? Uh-oh. Hey, it, it looks like a fight! Hey, Commander, look, it's two against one. They're sure slugging that guy. Come on, Hap. Yes, sir. We should have brought our ray guns. All right, break it up. Oh, hey, come back here. My dirty cowards. Shall I go after him, Commander? Let's take care of this man. He may be hurt. I don't wonder the way they were hitting him. Here, let me help you. Thanks. Those two guys sure disappeared fast. Let's get him under a light, see if he's there. I'm all right. Thanks. I'm sure glad you came along. What was it all about? You know, a couple of thugs... Jumped out of the doorway and started slugging me. It's getting so a man can't walk down the street without some who Why, can... you're Sam Morris. Yeah, that's right. I'll... Oh, Commander Corey. I knew you two were space patrols, but the light was so bad I couldn't... Happy, this is Sam Morris. Sam, Cadet Happy. How do you do, Mr. Morris? Howdy, Cadet. Sam, better let us take it to a doctor at headquarters. Oh, no, thanks. I'm all right. Well, you got quite a slugging from those characters. I'm fine. Well, it's sure nice to see you again, Commander, but if you'll excuse Are me... Are you still prospecting, Sam? Oh, now and then. Right now, I'm more or less of a watchman, you might say. Here in Pluto City? No, no, several hundred miles north of here. Guess you might call me a, a licensed squatter. You're a watchman? Well, what's there to watch that far north on this planet? Oh, well, just some government equipment. It's in an atmosphere shell. Used to be a base for some 
government explorers, mining engineers, and the like. I sort of take care of the equipment until the government decides what they want to do with it. Well, thanks for the rescue, Commander. Oh, wait a minute, Sam. You've had a pretty rough going over. Oh, I'm okay. These fellas hadn't taken me by surprise. I could have handled them both. They sure ruined your clothes. Look, your jacket's all ripped. The pocket's torn off. Oh, it's an old thing, anyway. I got a couple of licks in there, remember. Are you sure you don't know who they are? No, of course not. Just a couple of Pluto City thugs. If they knew how broke I was, they wouldn't have bothered. Well, I've got to run along now. Thanks a lot, Commander. You too, Cadet. Uh, glad to have met you, Mr. Morris. Hey, Sam, wait a minute. I've got to run along now. I'm late for an appointment. See you around, Commander. Well, I should put that beating pretty lightly. In the way he acts, you'd think this was something that happened to him every day. The feeling was more than this was just an attempt at hold up. Well, we'd better go on about our business, Happy. Oh, what's this? Oh, I'll flash my thumb on you. Money. A whole lot of it. Large bills, too. Mostly fit the credit notes. And here's a card. A business card of some kind. Maybe along the Mars. Hey, the commander, didn't he say he was broke? Yes, sir. Shine your light in this car, man. Yes, sir. John Harbach, mineralogist. Expert testing and analysis. 412 North and Bramada Street, Pluto City. He just tried me to drop out of Morris's jacket when those guys tore his pocket. Yeah. After we take care of our business, we'll drop in on Harbach and see if he knows where Mars is staying. Then you think this money belongs to him? Even when he claims to be broke? Not nice. Fellows like Morris always say they're broke. Keeps people from getting curious about where a prospector gets his money. Yeah, but why would he fib to you? Well, just to keep him practicing. Man. If this money does belong to Morris, I'm sure he'll be glad to get it back. Hang on to that card, Hatton. We'll drop in on Harbach on our way back. At this hour, Andromeda Street, like the rest of this section of Pluto City, is almost totally dark. Buzz and Happy walk toward a pool of violet light that streams across the sidewalk from a shop window. Well, this is 412, Commander. It's the only place in the street with a light on. Well, we're in luck. Uh-oh. The light went out. There's one on inside. Here in the back. It's locked. This car is just leaving. That's why the light in the window went out. It's automatic ultraviolet light. Huh? Look in the window. Hey, those rocks. They're glowing. They're fluorescent. They absorb ultraviolet rays when radiate them in the dark. Hey, rocks sure are pretty. <laughs> but they're wasted on this street. It's completely deserted. Well, we got here too late, huh? How about... Okay. Look inside. See that choking? It's choking. Looks like someone's lying there on the floor. Harbach must have been robbed. What a neighborhood. Let's force the door, Hatton. Yes, sir. Uh, I'll turn on the light, Commander. All right. At least he's cut. Let's get him away from that shattered choke. Yes, sir. Don't hit me. No, it's all right. We're space patrollers. Oh. I thought they were still here. Who attacked you? These two men. I never saw them before. They came in just as I was closing the shop. Are you John Harbaugh? Yes. Guy really something. I should throw the place apart. Is the safe locked? It's supposed to be. I'll check. <laughs> That's a relief. I didn't get it open. By the looks of your desk over there, they seem to be more interested in your record. You know why? No. Well, not exactly. What do you mean, not exactly? What happened here? Well, like I said. These two men came in just as I was closing. They wanted me to run a test on a piece of cloth. A piece of cloth? Yeah, I thought it was strange myself, me dealing with minerals. But it turned out there were traces of minerals in the fabric. That's what they were interested in. Well, this cloth, did they say where they got it? No, but it looked like it was thrown off a man's coat or jacket. A pocket, maybe? Yeah, that's it. They had me put it in an ultrasonic chamber to loosen the dust. And I ran an analysis of the particles that came out of the clock. And after that, they got rough. Hi. Right. They wanted some information about one of my customers, and I wouldn't give it to him. Well, this customer, is his name Sam Morris? Uh, yes. How did you know? He was attacked by two men earlier this evening. Was he hurt? I just bruised a little. After he went away, the cadet and I found one of your business cards on the sidewalk. That's why we came here. Why were these men interested in Morris? On account of a strong light, I guess. Strong light? Uh, there were traces of stone light in the dust particles from the piece of cloth, probably from the samples Morris brought here to have us as stone light. It's a very rare and valuable method. Mm. Morris made a strike, huh? Uh, I make it a policy not to ask questions of my customers, but 
But that's a reasonable conclusion. And you wouldn't tell these men about Morris. We slugged you and went through your records. Is that right? Yes. You know where we can contact Morris? No, Commander. He never told me anything about himself. I guess he's sort of a hermit. Very secretive. Did he mention an abandoned government station north of Pluto City? No. Neither one of those men did. Let's see if I can remember what was said. But after I analyzed the talk and mentioned Stonelight, one of the men said that. So that's why Morris has been holding up at that old exploration base when the other man made him shut up. Do you remember anything else? No. Well, wait a minute. One of them said Morris is probably all alone in that shell, and there are eight of us. Captain, we better find Morris right away. Yes, sir. Now, now that these cooks know that he's got... Yeah. Hmm? Okay, uh, someone across the street watching this shot. They put a bunch of people in there. Want me to go over and investigate you? They turn off the lights and stay in the leader. Yes, sir. How about don't look out the window until the lights are on? All right, Commander. See him? Yeah, but not very clearly. He's carrying off down the street now. Tell him, Hep. I'll take Harbach to headquarters. He'll be safe in there. We'll keep in touch through your miniature space upon him. Half an hour later, Commander Corey leaves the Pluto City Space Patrol headquarters in a surface car. His receiver is tuned with special miniature space phone frequency. Get that happy calling, Commander Corey. Get that happy calling, Commander Corey. Corey here. Go ahead, Hap. I'm on Polaris. 900 block 30. Half a block behind the man I'm taking. What's he up to? Nothing so far. But I got a pretty good look at him with half a hundred people. I swear he's one of the men that jumped Sam Morris. I'm in a surface car about a half mile from you. I'll come by and pick him up. Okay, Commander. Uh-huh. Uh-oh. Another man just stepped out of a doorway. Two of them are walking together. Probably his partner. Don't lose them, Hap. I'll be right there. I didn't have a chance to finish Harbaugh. These space patrollers were in his shop. Well, if you hadn't got panicky, we could have done the job when we were there before. Well, it doesn't matter, Savage. Harbaugh won't be able to put the finger on us anyway. We are at Pluto City in half an hour. Yeah. But Harbach knows we're interested in Sam Morris. If the space patrol tips Sam off, we... Duncan, we're being followed. Huh? Don't turn around. Just keep walking. When we turn the corner, we'll wait and let him catch up. Okay. Now, that's close to the wall. You're looking for somebody? Space Patrol for that. He's going for his leg. I'm Get him! Savage! Help me! Get your hands off of me! Oh, yeah! Oh. Good deal, Savage. Come on. Let's get away from okay. here. Wait a minute, Duncan. We're not going to make the same mistake as we did with Harbaugh. We're going to finish him. We'll return to Space Patrol in just a moment. Listen, kids. You know how much fun it is to be growing up. Every day there's a new thrill. Well, here's a thrill maybe you haven't tried yet. And believe me, you'll like it. It's the fun of having enough money to get the things you want. Maybe a new bike or a camera or saving for something big like business school or college in the years to come. Sound good? Well, here's how you do it. Put a part of your allowance and the extra cash you earn each week into school savings. It doesn't take long to have enough to buy a real United States savings bond like Dad gets all the time. And this is important. Bonds earn money for you. Uncle Sam stands behind them, and they're safe. So start to save now at your school. Mother and Dad will be proud of you for saving part of your allowance, and you'll have the fun of seeing your own money grow. A thrifty person is usually a better citizen. And take it from me, he's a lot happier than the fellow who saves nothing and can't buy the things he needs. Remember, save regularly every week at school. Have the money for the things you want when you want it. Now back to today's Space Patrol adventure, The Hermit of Pluto. Hans and Happy are on the planet Pluto, where they've learned that two men are using violent methods to obtain information on valuable deposits of the mineral stronolite, discovered by a prospector, Sam Morris. Using a miniature space phone, Happy has contacted Buzz in a surface car, and it's reported that he's trailing two suspects through the dark streets of Pluto City. Discovering that Happy is following them, the two men wait around the corner of a building and grab the cadet. You heard what I said, Duncan. Let's finish him. Oh, look, Savage, a ray gun would put him up. We can get away from the city. Yeah? And when he comes to, he could continue to chase. Do what I tell you. 
What have you guys got to be afraid of? You really must be up to something crooked. Shut up, Cadet. Quit struggling or I'll break your arm. All I know about you is that your names are Savage and Duncan, and you're walking down Polaris Street. And then all of a sudden you jump me on the corner of Polaris and Sigma Streets. I told you to shut up. Go on, Duncan. Get to work. You're going to be sorry. There's a space patrol surface car on the way here now. Uh, you're bluffing, Savage. One of those miniature space phones hanging on his belt. He's been mentioning the street name. That gadget's turned on. Then we got to work fast. Get into the car now. Trying to sneak up with the lights out. Help me hold it to that. We'll drag him down to the alley. Come on. Get moving, Cadet. Hold it, you two. Commander. Let's go, Ray. Let's get out of here. Use your ray gun. Let them have it. Oh, you don't. Get your hands up. Get the cadet. I'll take care of Corey. We got both of them, Duncan. That's it, boy. The whole neighborhood will be full of space patrols in a few minutes. Yeah. And that's why we can't go running through the streets. Get into the car. Hey, but Savage. Don't argue. Get into the car, quick. Okay. We'll ditch the car a block from the spaceport. Come on, get in. <laughs> A few moments after Duncan and Savage roar away in the commander's surface car, another space patrol car rushes to the scene to find Buzz and Happy unconscious on the sidewalk. Slightly more than an hour later in Pluto City headquarters, Buzz checks with space control, then turns to Happy. Two ships blasted off while we were under the effects of the ray gun. Huh? One of them was Sam Morris. And Savage and Duncan were in the other. Huh? Very likely. The second ship was registered to H.D. Margolis. So far, our agents haven't been able to locate anyone by that name here in Pluto City. Mm. Well, it could be an alias of either Duncan or Savage, I guess. Yes. The surface car I was using, one of our men found it abandoned and blocked in the spaceport. Well, if they try to land at any other spaceport, we'll have it. The trouble is they know it. I figured they're desperate enough to go right after Sam Morris. We ought to tip Morris off. We tried to reach him by space, I suppose. Now, my dear Morris is back at that abandoned station working his time. Oh, with Savage and Duncan after him, he's in a dangerous spot. To save his life, we've got to find Morris and persuade him to 